Dear friends in Christ, grace and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. Good journalists or attorneys or crossword puzzle masters, doctors or linguists, teachers, and many, many other people take words seriously. They want to be clear about what they read and what they say and what they write. Well, I'm afflicted with this same burden and sometimes to extremes. For example, when I see a sign that says, wet paint, I stop to wonder, is wet a verb or an adjective? Because if it's a verb, they want me to go get a cup of cold water and throw it on the paint, because the paint's thirsty. But if it's an adjective, well then, I guess they're warning me not to get too close or my shirt will be destroyed. When I first came to Westchester County, I crossed a bridge that I had never crossed. And the sign said, Throg's Neck Bridge. And so, my first thought was, what is a throg? And then I thought, well, it must be an animal because it has a neck. And then I thought, well, this part of the world was first conquered by the Dutch, and so maybe it's something in Dutch. Is it frog in Dutch? Well, I tried on the internet, and I didn't have any success. Maybe you can help me out with what a throg really is. Well, the same thing happens when we look at the scriptures. After reading today's gospel, I liked what I read, this command that we are to welcome others. We are to be welcoming. That's nice. But then I looked at a few other translations, and they said, not welcome, but receive others. Why? Well, what's the difference between welcome and receive? The original Greek, you've got to go back to that now, is dexomenos, and it means to welcome or to receive someone as if they were the ambassador of the king. So it's not just any old welcome. It's a really extreme welcome, you might say. Now, there are welcomes, you know, at the store. Sometimes there is somebody standing there and they're smiling and they say, Welcome to whatever store. Now, that's smart. That's good business. And it's common courtesy. Good people of any religion or no religion do that. But Jesus calls his disciples to go beyond courtesy, beyond being nice and beyond what is good for business, to this extreme welcoming. It is not Jesus calling us to be nice. We Lutherans pride ourselves in being nice, but it's more than that. In fact, it's not really about us at all. It's about the stranger. It is because of the stranger that we see in that stranger Jesus. 
the one whose word created us and all the word world, the one who is willing to die for us, the one God raised from the dead to tear down every wall that separates us one from another. So this extreme welcoming that Jesus commands means that we are to see people who have a lot of money and people like Matthew, the tax collector, who was despised. We are called to receive them as our sister or brother. And we are to receive in exactly the same way the one who shows up in dirty rags holding a bottle in his hand as our brother as well. No difference whatsoever. Extreme welcoming means that we see the one carrying the Confederate flag or one who is waving the rainbow flag as a member of our family, an emissary of God, Jesus presenting himself to us. Extreme welcoming means that we embrace in these days with some distance the hopes and the fears of people of every race to let them know that their hopes and fears are ours as well. Why? Because Jesus has welcomed you, me, all of us so extremely. Even though we are in bondage to ourselves, as Maria read, more than to anything else. When we know, though, that we don't deserve to be welcomed into the house of the King of the Universe, then we know that we are in the same boat with everyone else we meet. And we will then go to those extreme measures of not only the high, have a good day welcome, but to be extreme about it. So, just putting out on the sign, out on Manville Road, all are welcome, or putting it on the web page is a nice thing to do. But you'll probably find that on every store's web page and sign. You are welcome. To only do that is to be a weak welcoming church. It is not the extreme of receiving someone as the king and the emissary. To receive someone as they are Christ's faith, hope, and love presenting themselves for us. Those who have never experienced the extreme welcome of Jesus will read that web page or that sign and they will think to themselves, oh, well, they probably mean we welcome everybody except for those like me. So our distinctions between people are our own creation. And so our extreme welcome must happen wherever the church is, not just in this building, but it is in our neighborhoods, in our homes, at our work, and at school. And this is not a committee responsibility. It is the job of everyone that Jesus has welcomed so extremely. It is the priesthood, that is, the service, of all the baptized. Now here in chapter 10, Jesus says, whoever welcomes, 
do it extremely because you're welcoming me and welcoming God as well. This radical welcome. And we know that Jesus later on in this same gospel, in this gospel named for the tax collector who was welcomed, Jesus says whoever feeds or clothes or visits the poorest has fed or clothed me. Every congregation I know gathers food and sends it out to some other congregation to distribute to those who are in need. And this is something that not only Christian congregations do, but lots of other organizations do as well. It is a good thing to do. But I know that Emmanuel has gone to extreme measures in welcoming, going out on midnight runs to feed the homeless, to bring clothes to those who have been wearing the same dirty clothes for months on the streets of New York City, to go to them, to meet them, and not only to give them some food and clothing, but also to hear their stories, to listen to their hopes, their dreams, and their sorrows, to receive them into your life as they are a blessing to you as well as you to them. This is extreme welcome. In a few months, we will be officially welcoming some new members into the congregation. But when that day comes, when we get back together again, you will see that it doesn't say welcoming new members. It says receiving new members. And that's intentional. Because we don't just ask them to stand and say, hi, have a nice day. We say to them, we receive you as fellow members of the body of Christ, children of the same Heavenly Father, and workers with us in the kingdom of God. The very words that we receive when we are baptized. Because they may be children, they may be women, they may be men, they may be straight, they may be gay, or they may be struggling with their gender or sexual identity. They may be poor, they may be rich, they may be from any nation or any race. And we, in this radical, extreme welcoming, are one family in the body of Christ. After some time in the family here, we are understanding of many personalities, of many different ways of wealth, of poverty, of those in between, but we have all received this same gift of being welcomed by Jesus welcomed into a family of faith without regard to the distinctions that we humans set up as walls to separate one from another. We tear them down. And we receive from one another as sisters and brothers. And we have only one message, that our freedom to love and to serve comes only to us in Christ Jesus, who is Lord of all. This is a gift that we have received, that you or I have done nothing to deserve, and nor has anyone else. Yet having experienced God's extreme welcome, we have no choice but to offer that freedom to any and all we meet. 
Through all the struggle lately to achieve some basic human freedom and justice for all, all the things that this flag stands for, I had an interesting conversation with a friend of mine who decided to do something extreme for a Lutheran. He told me that he was going to the every Friday protest on 16th Street in Washington, D.C. And I was surprised to hear this. This was not what I expected. And I said, good for you and for all. Then I heard about an encounter that he had with a stranger. He was a black man riding a bicycle. My friend was standing on the side of 16th Street holding a sign that said, do right seek justice, and defend the oppressed. Isaiah 117. The stranger on the bike put the brakes on when he read the sign and stopped. And he asked, Are you a child of the king? And he replied, Yes, I am. Then they exchanged a socially distanced hug with one another, and he rode off on his bike. That is extreme welcoming in the name of Jesus. God's welcome to us is wild, extravagant, and extreme. God welcomed us by sending not just somebody, but his own son into our neighborhood to be crucified for us by the powers of oppression and injustice of this world that we might be received into God's family and God's kingdom, received fully and completely. It's not just God's hello, have a nice day. And it was from his cross that he created the family that we call the church, saying to his mother in his last moments, bleeding and gasping for his breath, saying, Mom, John here is now your son, and saying to his best friend, John, this now is your mother. So, because Jesus has received us in baptism as his sister or brother, undeservedly through faith alone, we can do, we really can do anything that offers that same gift to others, that same wild, extravagant, and extreme welcome to one and to all. Amen. So be it. Thanks be to God. And now the peace of God, the shalom of God, which passes all human understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.